Okay, welcome to the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Muga. You also know me as Patrick Penry. I have a WordPress blog and a YouTube channel. And occasionally I come on Blog Talk Radio, and I'm kind of doing a marathon now up until the election because I feel a great injustice has been done this summer. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission released documents through the Freedom of Information Act, and this would be back in late June, early July. Although some of the most damning stuff that we have been that we have found so far that we've been allowed to see, I should say, because recently I've come into some new information, I have reason to believe there's a lot worse stuff in there, and there's a lot more pages to go through. There may be as many as 500,000 pages, so there's a lot to cover. What I want to do is dig right in and read from my tales from the script one, and and try to continue to keep people informed about the details of the cover-up within these documents because one of the big things is it reveals just how they operate, how they control information, and how they throw these dragnets over the information at the time. And, and BP is probably a good example as well. If you look into that, you, if you remember back to the BP oil spill, and I use that term loosely, if you look back at that time, there was a real control of information, and there was a physical lockdown as well in the temporal spatial region time and space you couldn't take your boat out there and you couldn't go on the beaches and a no fly zone and you know that's a very uh, targeted and very effective uh, full court press if that's what you want to call it on an information dragnet and they can then they control the mainstream media everybody knows that and and if, and if you're within that first classification I call the first herd everybody calls them sheeple they you know, their version of what reality is is very much different than, than what others may be. And so this summer, a lot of this was missed and should have come to light <clears throat> in more detail. I'm going to explain some more of that when this first paragraph. Let me begin reading. I say, digging through the NRC FOIA documents is a Herculean task, considering that there are literally thousands of pages, like I say, maybe as many as 500,000 or more pages now, that must be carefully sifted through. What is revealed therein, however, is well worth the trouble, for a veil is drawn back upon so doing, a window that allows a view into a multi-agency cover-up. The tentacles of this cover-up stretch as far as the White House, indications of which can be found throughout the transcriptions and emails. For Obama, the selection cycle can't be over soon enough. For the GOP, why are they not? Well, now it's Romney. For Romney, why is he not using Plumegate as the tool with which to unseat Obama? And that's the question that you guys will be asking yourselves when you become familiar with the documents. And I suggest that when you have time to read, you just begin to you know, go through from the first one and work your way down and you know, just start skimming through them and familiarize yourself with the emails and the characters involved and their tactics and how they do information suppression. And it's a real eye-opener. It's quite a lesson in in cover-ups. If, you, if you've ever wondered how they do Roswell and, the, like I say, the BP and Three Mile Island and even Chernobyl, if you look at Chernobyl, that was a cover-up there because it wasn't until neighboring countries detected fallout and then eliminated their country as a source and then looked at Russia and started calling the ambassador and said, hey, what's going on? We, we have a, a meltdown we need to know about. <clears throat> so let me continue. Uh, I make a notation that the in the transcripts, they say there may be typographical errors, but by and large, it seemed to be fairly accurate except for, like I say, the inaudible parts, which seem to appear, oh, man, my cat has jumped on my laptop. Lola, I swear, I'm trying to record this as well. <laughs> my cat is not going to cooperate. Okay, that's recording again, I swear. Give me just a second, folks. I'm going to put my cat and lock her in the bathroom. Debbie? He has to be arrested immediately. <laughs> okay, my apologies, but this is very real, very real for me, folks. When you have two cats in the house and about 11 o'clock, 10.30, 10.45, they start getting riled up. Okay, let's dig back in. Now, these are some of these you may recognize are from the 507-page document. This is uh, my first Tales from the Script, and I was drawing from that particular one, which has some really good stuff, some of the best stuff that we're allowed to see now. Oh, by the way, I make a say up here that you know other places are are talking about this at the time, but now looking back at it, what I realize is, and I suspect that 
to some degree, all of this is being, um, just a second, because it's not going to work. My recording is going to be a failure. Okay, forget that. Um, okay, my point what I was going to say is if you look at the outlets that are talking about this, it's like there's different ways that this information is being released, but the the worst of the worst, I'm being told, is still has not come to light. So it seems some outlets won't talk about it at all. Some will just barely touch upon it and not give you much. Some will give you a little more dirt, and some will, you know, will give you a whole bunch of stuff, but not the very best. And if this pans out, I'll have some good information in the next couple of days for you. So that's what I suspect is going on throughout all the media right now. There's like these little, um, how should I describe it? It keeps going through these little uh, exceptions that, that filter and give you a little more, a little more, but the whole thing and some of the best stuff is never really given to you. So let's dig right in with what I title, You Can't Handle a Worst-Case Scenario. And I apologize about my caps there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Mike says, Rob, this is inaudible. I have a question for you. This request for doses in California projected with, I guess, worst-case assumptions. Is that correct? Inaudible. Mr. Lewis, I believe the doses that we saw from DITRA, and they do, DITRA does modeling, represented a source term of 100% of the inaudible. Mike, okay, and where is this information being considered for releasing publicly, like we do with a press release? Mr. Lewis, which information are you speaking about? Mike, I'm talking about these projected dose models, the models that you, the ones that you are doing and coordinating with other agencies. Is there some thought about releasing that publicly? Mr. Lewis, we have not had that discussion at this time. Mike, and don't take that as a suggestion to inaudible. I'm just curious as how we came upon doing that with our press release, and then are we advocating that for any future press releases here for doses in the U.S.? Mr. Dorman's chiming in now. Mike, this is Dan. Dan Dorman is this character's name. No, no, we're not planning any press release with this information. This was a projection that we were requested to run. Separate from our being requested to run that, we got this DOE briefing package that had this other DITRA run in it. And we're not, I don't know what prompted theirs or all the assumptions that went into theirs, but it obviously caught our attention, and we are looking to get what we think would be more realistic projections, other questions. And you see, might I add, in some of these documents, when they say more realistic projections, you see evidence where they, they tell people they come back with a, a run, a rascal, or ditra run, or whatever, and they show it to the person, and they, they don't like it, and they kind of say, well, well, run the assumptions, is what they call it, but I think they're referring to source terms, in other words, any source of radiation that may be emanating from the disaster site. It could be a spent fuel pool, it could be a, a reactor containment is breached, or whatever, so they their modeling is done off particular source terms. And early on, one of the models, I read an article, were just off the number one uh, source term modeling, we were going to get, you know, sufficient doses of radiation over here in the states, even off just a, you know, and it was left like four, so we have multiple source terms. And will we ever really know? I mean, I don't know the information, even from TEPCO in Japan, has been not forthright and few and far between, and the further time goes, the more you find out they lied. And TEPCO is just a model of, you know, we've owned Japan for a long time. If you read any of Chalmers Johnson's books, if any of you guys are familiar with him, He's a bit of an expert in the Asian Eastern Orient section, especially Japan, and he points out how we've, since World War II, uh, we've had uh, Japan in our grip big time, and it's probably not changed to this day. I mean, if we're telling them to be quiet and to them to hold information, they will certainly, you know, be at our beck and call to do that, is what it appears. Um, let me finish reading here. He says, any other questions, Mr. Dorman says? Miss Howe. Okay, this is the lady from the Region 4, and I'm pretty certain now these are NRC regions. America is sectioned into regions, and nuclear plants are located in those regions. And Linda Howe from Region 4, I'm pretty sure this is not a FEMA region. I just mis mis uh, um, took that wrong the other day. Okay, uh, he says, Miss Howe says, Dan, just one comment. And Rob, this is Linda Howe in Region 4. Rob, I can talk with you offline about some background information for California. The DITRA and DOE runs for California may have been prompted by queries from the state because the state has been conducting interagency conference call, and DOE, EPA, HHS has all been part of those calls. 
a regional state liaison officer is also monitoring that. So there's some background that is politically sensitive that I can share with you offline. Now this is interesting because today in my searches through the documents I found another reference to, was it political sensitives is how this one was. They were discussing testing seawater off the coast of Japan. One guy, if I, I may be mistaken, I thought his last name was Chu with the Department of Energy and another lady, Vicky, I can't remember, I'll have to talk about this, I have to get this prepared. I may take tomorrow off so I can prepare for Friday and have some new material. But they were discussing the testing of seawater off the coast of Japan, and the lady was saying that it was could be uh, you know, politically sensitive to do so if anybody, I guess, found out. The guy from the Department of Energy was just concerned about who was going to pay for it. You know, So <laughs> our best interests are not being you know, put, put at the priority that they should be here. You can clearly see if it's a money aspect, then, I mean, first of all, a lot of money is being wasted. We know that. But secondly, hey, I think we'd all chip in to get some testing to find out real time what's going on so we can take precautions because if you're shipping Japan potassium iodine and and if the, uh, who was the general surgeon over here said we, we should take it and then backtrack an hour later and say, oh, no, 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 I was wrong. You know, we see what's going on here. There's phone calls are being made. People are told to be quiet and retract a statement. And there's a giant cover-up. And if you don't do it, if you don't follow along, well, folks, what I'm hearing is that things can get pretty rough for you. If you ever seen the movie Silkwood, that's based off a real story. The lady who was a whistleblower against a nuclear power plant was run off the road, and people are are killed and injured and threatened, and this is a very real, a very dangerous industry. You know, when I started writing about nuclear power, that's what I, I found. Of all the areas that I researched and wrote articles on, I found that in the nuclear power areas, it's, 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 it's strange. It's very mysterious that all this, you know, effort and power and influence is put into this one uh, uh, industry it seems above all others almost like this is the one that at all costs these guys are going to protect nuclear and if something else has to go then fine but nuclear is the one that they don't want it to go anywhere and it's it's pretty much madness once you're familiar with the documents and you read how serious the tepco incident was and what happened there and then the real-time effects over here you realize that if the bwr1 goes up in america that's going to be very, very bad. I don't want to be within a thousand miles of it, and I don't think anyone listening to the show or anyone who's researching this kind of stuff is that far away from one. I mean, everyone, I'm 75 kilometers from where they want to build the two new Levy County plants, and the Crystal River is probably 100 kilometers from me, and that's already got a cracked containment, and it's shut down. So, again, you see it's uh, problematic, all of these, especially once they reach their, they've gone through their time limit, and they'll, They'll relicense them, but we all know that that's really like rolling the dice is all that amounts to. So it's not profitable either because if you only get 40 years out of one and you shut it down and you have to subsidize it heavily, well, it's not profitable. It's not safe. I mean, it's not sane either. I should probably throw that in there. <clears throat> okay, let's go to this speaking highly of DOE. This shows that DOE, people know all about DOE on the inside. I mean, when you look at Three Mile Island, they're proven liars, proven liars, the Department of Energy. Yes, I'm going to say that because in the Three Mile Island incident, they said, oh, nothing happened, nothing really came out, no one got hurt. That's a fact. Well, the Three Mile Island has settled out a court over a million dollars to a family with a Down syndrome child. So put two and two together, someone is a liar right there. You wouldn't, I wouldn't pay a penny if I hadn't hurt someone or damaged someone. So that's pretty clear uh, evidence right there. So here we're talking about the Department of Energy. And I say that because it seems the NRC is bad, but the Department of Energy, man, they seem like they're even worse, you know. That's my opinion so far anyway. Male participant. And we ought to, giving assistance, we ought to be giving the experts, not male participants, second male participant says, on the other side of this is DOE is pushing to have a contingent of DOE people join Chuck. Chuck is saying, I don't need that kind of help just yet. So that's an issue that second male participant says, yes, because if he sends a contingent of DOE people, we are going to have to send the contingent of Wranglers to, the other guy says, and Chuck knows that very well. I think this is Chuck Castro, if I'm not mistaken. So they know that DOE is a problem. They're not going to help the situation by sending them down there. And like I say, some elements of the NRC, they're not all totally corrupted. 
but a, a vast majority of them are totally in on this dragnet of information. They know that the reality, one, is the plume and fall out every time, and they also know we're in a jet stream. The Pacific jet, jet stream flows from Japan right over here. They know all this information. They know all the information from Three Mile and Chernobyl. They state that in the documents multiple times, many times. So right there, they don't want you reading through these documents so you can find out that what the shills and trolls and nuclear apologists tell you is totally different than what they say in these documents. Early on when I got trolled up hard, I got trolled hard. This guy comes to me after telling me everything I want to hear. One morning he's posting up on Facebook this mathematical calculation that proves there's no way that radiation could have reached the West Coast. It was laughable. It was laughable. So I post like six or seven of my articles, all my links and everything. What they do, they, they block me and delete me. And then the one girl apparently has written some article calling me an agent. So you see how that works. You can prove them wrong when you do. What can, the only they have a couple choices. They can attack you or they can just disappear. And then they can slander you, of course. That's a great option for them as well. I'm not going to stoop to those levels. I just keep on going and, and preaching the truth. That's all I can do. Okay, let's continue back to the document or to my article. Working on worst-case models, C's and the CIS. Again, here's that example I spoke of earlier where if it doesn't fit, the, it's like the president saying, give me a budget, you know, for 2012. And you come back and say, sir, we're, we don't have enough money. We're running out of money. Just go back, crunch the numbers again until you come back with what I need to see. So pretty soon your assistants learn, look, just don't come back until you got what he needs to see. You know what he wants to see. Do you see how that works, folks? Mr. McDermott, I think this is Brian McDermott. I'm actually starting, yeah, there you go. Josh, this is Brian McDermott. I'm starting to know these characters. Josh, hey, Brian, real quick. I'm giving you from the chairman a cease and desist on the modeling that we started to attempt to do yesterday with the MAX code to get all the way to the U.S. Mr. McDermott, okay. Josh, we don't need to pursue, we would like to stop pursuing that. We don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> it's almost laughable to me, you know. Mr. McDermott, okay. Josh, copy. Mr. McDermott, I copy. Josh, all right, we'll follow up. I can follow up more after the call. Mr. McDermott, okay, yeah, I'd like to understand. Thank you. Josh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is almost out of a comedy script. I mean, you're not going to – obviously, there's a, there's a failure to communicate, right? Isn't that part of that movie? There's a failure to communicate with industry, with our corporate fascist industry, which is hand-in-hand, in, hand, in bed with the government. Folks, this has been going on a long time. We are in a serious, serious situation in this country because corporate profits outweigh our lives. You know, they don't care about us at all. What they do care about is making a lot of money and living this lavish lifestyle, this tiny few that control everything. And that's the most amazing thing, that if we could just get this information, the housewives that watch The View every day, folks, if that view went off all of a sudden, and a special came on on the NRC for you documents and started telling this and the fatality numbers and about the children's cell dividing and the iodine and cesium and the milk and everything. Seriously, folks, they would then understand, look, this nuclear stuff, it's not worth it the children. It's not worth it the children getting dosed to radiation. We'd rather have solar cells and the government release suppressed technology over 5,000 patents. If you can't have a solar cell that's more than 20% efficient, no wonder Solyndra failed. It was meant to fail. It was built to fail. But people don't understand those concepts that a lot of these systems in America are negative systems. They are meant to be that way. If you are sick, you have to pay someone to heal you. There is no incentive to fix cancer, to release a cure for cancer. There's many cures for cancer. Make no mistake. In fact, I've, I'm working up a list of what they won't talk about in alternative media. And some of them are medical, some of these new uh, cures and new treatments that are you know, they're in the underground because the establishment, this huge industry, is keeping them suppressed, just like anything else. So we see here a failure to communicate between this industry, nuclear industry, that promises us clean energy, right? We know that's a lie because they're all allowed an effluent. Well, how much of an effluent? They'll say not very much. Is the, the standard, they don't have a limit, you know. But again, these are the ones consistent lying throughout the documents, right? Now they're telling us, don't worry about the effluent, the radioactive discharges. It's just a minimum. We check it. Well, you're proven liar, so I don't believe that. And if the children's teeth, as they test closer to the power plants, have higher levels of strontium-90, that disproves Cold War era bomb testing. We now know all these plants discharge radiation. 
Now, I'm sure the cancer industry is not going to complain about that because, incidentally enough, when I pulled up the e and &E News article the other day about the lung cancer, wherever it was, there was a Shands Lung Cancer Hospital treatment from Gainesville, Florida, where I live, that conveniently showed up right there. So while the ad was talking about cases of lung cancer, or the article, the advertisement was right there to sell you the cure. Right? Well, if you got the money anyway, right? So this is big business, and people need to dig into these documents and understand what they're hiding from you is you will learn the inner working, uh, workings of this conspiracy, of the cover-up, all their tactics, their strategies, the talking points, the, the searching uh, media for anyone writing an article to do immediate damage control. And then when you realize the severity, the magnitude of this, then you, then you will only conclude that something is amiss within the media, that this wasn't, you know, if you look back at Watergate and Ollie North and the Iran-Contra, I always have to refer back to this because look at the attention they got. Well, look at the attention Michael Jackson got when he died, folks. I mean, come on, something's really seriously. All right, back to the article. We're being recorded. Don't talk about the California thing. Brian. Did we ever get the, I'm trying to think of what the best term is, the everything, everything inaudible scenario back from, I thought that one was we were going to ask Merrick to run once they had time, male participant. Are you talking about the doses they saw all the way out in California? That's the Comer Simpson moment right there. The Brian's trying to say anything and everything but the doses in California. Again, they all know they're being recorded. I found evidence again today where they mentioned FOIA documents they want to, get all the emails to centralize to this one, uh, was a FOIA box, or they call it, or something like that, because they know they're going to redact. They know they're being recorded. So look how they mitigate the freedom of information right from the beginning. Of course, they'll probably say national security or some BS story like that. But they redact heavily. They channel all the emails and all the information. So folks, in an industry like nuclear, we can't afford there to be a moment's delay or any kind of discrepancy between what they tell us and what the truth is, especially when we're talking about thyroid doses to children. Again, these documents show clearly that they have they don't care about us, you know, and the ones in control certainly don't. Maybe on the lower level, some of the grunts don't know better in some of the nuclear power plants. You know, they, they must not know the whole story because I can honestly tell you, once you figure out what the deal is, you would never work at a nuclear power plant. You can pay me any kind. There's no kind of money you could pay me to work at a nuclear power plant, ever, ever. So you're talking about the doses they saw way out in California. Brian, yes. Okay, you blew my cover, man, basically. Male participant, yeah. That is going to be run by research in Sandia. But they're not going to be able to do it until later today. Brian, oh, okay. Male participant, sounds like they had to modify the code first in order to do that run. Other male participants had to modify the MAC code. They, NARAC, did do their evaluation of using our source term, and they, they were calculating doses, particularly for children, thyroid doses of inaudible after that the one-year dose, assuming some very conservative assumptions about ingestion and inaudible practices. They might be talking about lifestyle practices, because if you're outside a lot, kind of what I'm understanding is, when it comes to the beta gamma count and everything, you can wear clothing that will protect you from that. You have to wash your clothes afterward, I'm pretty sure, like borax or something like that. I'm not too up to date on all that. but Okay, back to the okay, the doses to children in California. Again, this is very clear that, that they know early on we're going to get dosed, but they have a whole other story. And Now, whether Obama knows or not, I can't prove that, but I can prove that you know, they're either lying to him or he's a buffoon or he's in on it. One of those three things is, is definitely proven once you look at these documents. He says historical data and convert those doses using the same update techniques. And they have some calculations. They hadn't shown them to be inaudible, but they are showing millirem range doses like 1 to 10 millirem. Male participant, for the actual deposit. So we think there is some extreme conservatism in the DITRA numbers, and we will know more once research does their inaudible. I should point out here that when you read the documents and become familiar, you see that when these accidents happen, they're like Indiana Jones, folks. They are making it up as they go along. They don't even have models that go beyond like a 1,000 miles. They couldn't even run a quick model to, to see realistic, not that they would tell us, 
Okay, but they don't even have that capacity. Maybe now they do. Maybe they're working on it now. Now, I will say this. Early on, the NILU, it's a Norwegian modeling a company that does modeling of particulates in the atmosphere. They were cranking out a lot of models. Okay, this is really strange. I've got time to talk about this real quick. The NILU were cranking out a lot of really damning models that showed uh, everything from cesium to iodine. Uh, I think pretty much that's what they were xenon, stuff like that. But you could see where the U.S. was getting dosed. You could see where the U.K. was getting dosed. Now, if you look at some of the pictures I've got on the Blog Talk radio page as it's flicking through, there's one that shows that France, uh, Japan, and uh, U.K., at least those three, maybe more, even more, I'm sure Germany, I think, they gave rainwater warnings. They show a picture, you hold an umbrella, and you see the little nuclear sign, and it's telling you stay out of the rain, stay out of the rain, you know. So when Taiwan had, what it was, it, radioactive levels that were that were high enough to tell their kids to stay out of the rain, they didn't go to school. Well, that same day over here in California, apparently, it was ten times as high, and nobody said anything. So this is, this is the big thing about the documents and why they're just going to give you some small stuff and not give you this big picture and, and put it all together like that because it, for the nuclear industry, it's really the nail in the coffin. They, they don't have much to argue, and that's why they don't give you a chance to argue. Uh, for instance, in this Levy County plant, you can't even argue that they melt down and all the kind of stuff that goes with, with it. The best you can do is say, hey, it's using too much water from the aquifer. On that alone, we can't have one here. So we'll see how that goes. That's coming up at the end of this month, and I may go to that with my mom. And that's in Bronson. It's not too far from me. You don't have the opportunity to speak, but you can listen to what the panelists, I think it's the Atomic Board of Atomic Scientists or whoever is that actually gives the permit or whatever. So I may be able to go to that and actually hear what they have to say, and that could be quite interesting. So that's pretty much going to sum it up here for tonight. Um, do check out this document. It's the 507-pager, and it's if you look at, I think, uh, page 151, they talk about, quote, we have all the benefit of knowing about Chernobyl. That's a nice one to have when the trolls and shills and nuclear apologists tell you that Chernobyl was, you know, they don't, you know, innocuous, right? You tell them in the documents they're talking all about, they know exactly how serious it was. They're doing models off of it, actually. They know. So, folks, I will continue again. I'm going to take tomorrow off because I want to come up with some new, like I say, there's so many pages to go through. And, for instance, I opened up today randomly. I choose one, open it up, go right to the back because the front of the documents, they put some bogus stuff in there to distract you and hope you don't go to the back. Go 75% of the way through and start going through the emails and familiarize yourself because I've got a Tales from the Script Part 5 and just about 30 minutes worth of work. Okay, I'm running out of time here. Please join me again, not tomorrow. I'm going to take that day off. I'll be back Friday with some new material. Read through the Tales from the Script. Read through that 507-page document. And Halloween, I'm probably going to read from my Operation Mockingbird style alternative media infiltration and maybe set up to do an hour that night or something. We'll see if I can get the money together to do it. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you back again on Friday. And uh, sorry about my cats disrupting everything. That's kind of threw me, threw me for a loop there, folks. Okay, appreciate it. Over and out.